Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today's topic is going to be the New York Jets versus the New England Patriots and previewing that matchup on Monday night. But before we get started, I just wanted to mention that you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So now that we got that out of the way, let's jump right into today's video by talking about the Jets' big addition back. C.J. Mosley hasn't played since week one. In that week one matchup against Buffalo, he was a monster. He had a pick six. He had a pass deflected in the end zone, and that yielded an 81 rating from Pro Football Focus. He had a really solid game and was the Jets' best defensive player on the field. He's been out since then, so he's making his long-awaited return, and that's going to help the New York Jets defense tremendously because we saw when he left the field in week one, the Jets defense looked completely different. They melted down in the fourth quarter. This is just going to only enhance a unit that's impressed me so far. They're 16th right now in the league in defense, and I think that could get even better with the addition of CJ Mosley because he's a phenomenal player, an all pro caliber inside linebacker, a perennial pro bowler. This is a huge addition to the New York Jets defense. To me, the biggest matchup is the New England Patriots defensive line and front seven versus the New York Jets offensive line. The O-line's been an issue for the New York Jets all year long, and there's now some drama. As Kalechi Osalemi is not going to play this week, some stories say that he has been cleared by New York Jets doctors. Others say that he hasn't been cleared. He wants the surgery. The team doesn't want him to have surgery. All things considered, I think this is the last we've probably seen of Osalemi in green and white. I think he either gets traded or just doesn't play another game for the New York Jets, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because they found Lewis, who is a phenomenal, ah, phenomenal is a stretch. He is a very good offensive guard, the best offensive lineman the New York Jets have had. I don't think that's a question, though. So Osalemi out, Calvin Beecham out. We move then, Truma Doga to left side, and Shell comes back in on the right side. Makeshift offensive line, but I think it'll still be okay because Sam Darnold is going to use his elusiveness, which we saw on display last week. When the offensive line struggles, Sam Darnold has the ability to escape and make plays and make throws on the run and outside of the pocket. That's what makes him most successful, and he's at his best when he's moving around. So, I think it's not a big, as big of a deal as it's being made out to be. Still, a very talented unit and one of the biggest strengths of that Patriots defense. They are second in the league in sacks with 25, so that scares me a little bit. But ultimately, I think Sam Darnold is going to be just fine in that regard. The Patriots are number one overall in Team DVOA. And are we really surprised? This team is well coached every single year. Bill Belichick is the best coach in football. I can't deny that. I think he's a jerk sometimes to the media and a little bit snarky, but if you win as many Super Bowls as he does, you could probably get away with that. And his team is always ready to play. They are good on offense. They can beat you running the ball. They can beat you throwing the ball. They can beat you defensively. They are just a well-rounded football team with a ton of depth, and it's not surprising at all that they are 6-0 and and number one in DVOA. Over the last two years, Adam Gase, while with the Miami Dolphins, split with the New England Patriots. Oddly enough, the one year that he went 10-6, and six, he was unable to beat the New England Patriots, but on a 6-10 and 10 year and 7-9 and nine year, he was able to beat them. So that's something good going for the New York Jets and Adam Gase, is that over the last two years, he split with them. Granted, one time was on a miracle play because Rob Gronkowski was playing safety, but nonetheless, this is why he was brought in to coach the New York Jets, was because he, quote-unquote, knows how to beat the Patriots. How true that really is, I don't really know, but history is on the New York Jets' side over the last couple of years, and this is a home game for the Jets, so maybe they split. Maybe. Over the last six games at MetLife Stadium between the Jets and the Patriots, the margin of victory has been on average six points. So these are one possession games and really close games. The Jets are two and four over that span, their last win coming in 2015. So this 10 point spread this week or nine and a half, wherever you have it, seems like a really big stretch. I don't think it's going to be that much of a blow. I think it's going to be a one possession game and I think it's going to be a close game which goes in the Jets' favor because if they can keep it close with their quarterback, they could come back and win potentially win this game, which you don't really get to say that very often for the New York Jets in their quarterback situation. So how can the Jets win this game? To me, my plan on offense would be spread out New England. We know they have a really good corner in Gilmore. We know that their linebacker core is very good. You have Hightower, Kyle Van Noy, and Jamie Collins, who are very, very solid. They get after the quarterback. They are big. They can stop the run. So what I would do is utilize all three running backs. You have Le'Veon Bell, 
Bilal Powell, and Ty Montgomery. Use them all. I would have two back sets. I would have Le'Veon line up in the slot, ultimately with the goal that you can get the Patriots linebackers in coverage because then I think they're beatable. If you are running into the A-gap a million times like you did in the first matchup, then it's not going to go very well. You are going to lose 30-14. to 14. And granted, the New York Jets had a backup quarterback at that point, but this go-around, they have Sam Darnold, and if you're able to spread out that Patriots defense, I think you can have a chance in this game. And that's all the Jets need to do, is enter the fourth quarter in a one-possession game with a chance to win. Ultimately, my final score prediction is New England 24, Jets 20. I don't think they're quite ready to beat the Patriots. I think it'll be a close game and a tight game, which, I mean, at this point, that's all we could really ask for because it's high expectations if you expect them to knock off a 6-0 and team and a team that has a realistic chance to go 16-0 and this year, which is just wild, and that they've been to a million Super Bowls in a row. I- we know what the Patriots are. They're going to win the division every year. They're going to go at least 12-4 and four every year. It's a very tough ask to beat this team with almost a, essentially a bye week. They played last Thursday. They didn't play on Sunday. And this is a Monday night game. This is the longest amount of time you could have to prep for a game without it being a bye. Advantage Bill Belichick and the Patriots. Ultimately, I think the Jets have the talent to keep it close, but I don't think they have enough to beat them. Would I be shocked if the Jets won? No but I just don't quite think they're ready just yet. Let me know in the comments below what you think the final score is going to be. Let me know if you have any predictions for this game. You can get at me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why. Make sure to tune in next time. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Give the video a like, and I'll talk to you guys next time.